Welcome to EQ Server, the complete earthquake observatory data management system. We're going to give you an overview of the basic functions of EQ Server. The first step being to customize the main map. To do that, go to settings, click on maps and networks, click on the main map, and then define your main area of interest, and then you can define some sub networks. We'll get to that in a moment. So, your main map is shown on the home page and every subnetwork that you've defined is also shown. So if we're going to add a new subnetwork, say in South Australia here, then we click back to the maps and networks, add a new network and select it from our as a sub part of our main map. Then we give it a name and then we scroll down and we select the area. The dots on the map are the stations that are in the database to give you an idea of where you want to select. It shows you a list of all the stations in your database or you can select it just for a particular network and then you can highlight them on the map to turn them on or you can turn them on and off from the list. So this defines what stations are going to be displayed. The section at the top called event association has three parameters. The time frame in which to associate triggers together into a single event, the minimum number of stations that need to trigger within that time window, and how long to wait after that first trigger for more arrivals to come in. So now we've gone to our map, we see that they're defined, but they're red because there's no data coming in at the moment. So we need to get some data. So if we go to settings, and go to the seed link option, we can now see that we can access lots of different stations. Here we have a list of all networks that are available on the IRIS Seedlink server. So by clicking one on, you can see all of the stations that are available. You can turn multiple networks on and off if you want to see all of them, or some of them. Uh, but in this case, we are looking for stations from the Australian network. So we'll click on an Australian server and here is the Geoscience Australia network which has those stations that we want from the South Australia network. So we turn on the channels that we'd like to subscribe to and then we need to wait uh, for some time for the data to start coming in and eventually when we reload we'll see that here's one station already coming in. Go and have a look, that's Buckle Boo. We're still waiting for the other stations, but let's have a look at the Buckle Boo data. If we click on the live data screen, we'll see that Buckle Boo has now started sending some live data in. But we don't necessarily want all of those channels to be shown. So if we turn off the display of the east and north channels, we'll see that when it updates, those east and north channels will disappear and we're showing just the vertical. And now we've got an Appaby coming in as well. So let's turn on the other station as well, and eventually that will also display. EQ Server also allows you to easily extract your data from the archive. Simply click on the Wavefinder icon, enter a date and a time, and then you can select the stations you'd like to download. You can download data from all stations, just from one of the sub-networks or from a certain distance away from one station and then select whether you want SUDS format or mini seed format data. EQ Server also allows you to extract events from your earthquake database using a similar menu. Simply set a date range and then a search area. Then you can filter the results by magnitude or intensity or some other parameters that are saved in the database. Network health graphs are a history of the uptime of your stations. So you can do it for all of your stations or for one of your sub-networks. And then it will plot how many stations were available uh, throughout the period uh, and overall for your network. You can view continuous data an hour at a time for all of your stations or from one of your sub-networks and you'll see the latest data. You can go back an hour at a time, click on an event of interest see it zoomed in or select a particular date and time that you want to view. Here's an earthquake. Click to have a closer look and then you can see the waveforms on all of the other stations. You can then add a comment about this event to the page so that when you come back to it later you'll know which event that is. 
You can also download the file. Full sample rate data file is then downloaded, which you can then open with EQ Wave. And then you can have a look at just one of the stations and pick your PNS waves more accurately. So once you've picked a PNS arrival time, the distance of that event is determined, allowing a magnitude to be estimated. You can also look at one station for 24 hours and go back to a particular day. So let's find a day where we had some earthquakes at this station. Here's the main earthquake. So we click here to zoom in. We see it clearly on the Corum site and on a few of the neighbouring sites as well. Again, we can download that data and have a look at it. We can close this window and have a look at the few aftershocks that run a few minutes later. You can see it's much smaller on the other stations. And another. Now we have a look at the automated events. So here's the latest automatic earthquake location. We can browse through previous locations by looking at by month and by network. Each of the sub-networks is triggering on its own events. EQ Server is available as a complete solution pre-installed on a PC or it can be provided as a cloud hosted service for a once-off setup fee and a monthly access fee. For more information visit www.src.com.au